So I have a couple of quick facts just to lead us off here uh, and set the stage for this uh, topic we're discussing. If you're here in Chicago this week attending IRCE, you know that the very nature of retail is changing both for consumers as well as retailers. Um, and that change is accelerating. We've titled tonight's event Transparent Commerce to reflect how deal-driven consumers armed with always-on real-time information on their mobile devices are forming a new retail landscape. They're becoming more fickle, uh, potentially less loyal. They're definitely making decisions based on real-time data. Three quick facts. Uh, so Forrester has mentioned that um, uh, mobile transactions will reach $31 billion by 2016. This is a compounded forecasted growth rate, guys, of 40% year over year for the next four years. Uh, we've seen Comscore recently uh, issue information on television, per television set purchases, uh, which reached 30% of total television purchases uh, being uh, performed online as of the second quarter of this year. That's up 17% over last year and is forecasted to continue at 20% year over year. And lastly, based on our own data here at Mercent, um, Amazon's third-party seller program, uh, which constitutes 39% of their total unit volume, uh, has grown for 13 consecutive quarters at an average of 49% year over year. So Amazon's business, not only their retail business, but the third-party seller business that they operate is growing at roughly three times the rate of organic e-commerce. So I'm going to turn to our panel, and with those data points and that introduction, uh, we're going to begin our Q&A. And uh, I'll start first by saying, uh, just simply, as we look forward to uh, the next 18 months at consumer behavior, uh, how do we expect that uh, shopper behavior will be changing further based on what we've seen here recently? Uh, and Susharita, since you're down at the far end, I'll start with you. I think that the, the most important fact in all of this, though, is that the pie is still flat overall. Retail is growing at an aggregate um, of low single digits, if anything at all. Um, web is taking a significant part of that, but um, the reality is, is that we're still in an economic downturn. Unemployment is nearly at 10%, and uh, what that means is that we're really, um, it, in a lot of ways, um, you know, fighting for, for a wallet share. And, we're, and for every winner in the web space, there is, there, it's a zero-sum game. We've got an opportunity as retailers to leverage all of these channels. And I think um, eBay has uh, traditionally been in the, in the business of enabling people to sell online. It really started out as an e-commerce channel, uh, e-commerce platform that has evolved into a, a, a very... Uh, important channel for, for many businesses. So I, I don't think it really makes a sense to think about it as a single in one way or another. I want to turn our attention a bit to Google. So Google, of course, Michaela, has been in the news last week with some significant changes to the Google Shopping program. And let's just talk about overall um, where Google sees the industry going in terms of e-commerce and also specifically around customer acquisition. Uh, where your attention is focused in trying to reach these consumers as their behavior change, uh, changes over time. Yeah. Yes, um, so for, for Google, we're focusing on um, the user experience on our products uh, usually, and I think for commerce, this really means um, partnering with retailers on that, since they're controlling a big part of the user experience, um, as in controlling the checkout, where users are actually buying the products, uh, controlling the product data, the information that, that we can display on our side. And I think it's it's important that we you know uh, acknowledge that user expectations are rising and um, that we address this in a partnership together. Um, in in my mind, there are actually also three factors for users who, when they um, choose which side to engage with or which retailer to buy from in the online world, and those are um, price, obviously, um, but not only is also trust, I think, and convenience, and also speaking about kind of like the rise of the marketplaces, um, you know, where where I think retails can capitalize on the trust and the convenience that the big marketplace brings with itself. Um, so, I mean, last week we made the announcement, as you, just, uh, as you just mentioned, that we're engaging in commercial relationships with, with retailers going forward. <laughs> and we really think that this will help us also to give 
get better, higher quality product data and, and build the better user experience um, in that sense, which will also lead to higher quality traffic for, for our retailers. I want us to go down uh, the row here, starting with Sushirita, and just kind of final uh, thought or practical takeaway that you might have for the audience tonight. Um, everybody needs an Amazon strategy. Great. Um, reverse showrooming was an idea that came up today, which I thought was quite interesting. So uh, if you're a retailer and you've got to get your local inventory out on uh, mobile search and, and other, other mobile platforms, if a retailer is out near your store searching for something, you want to you wanna make sure you want to either show them an ad or show them an offer and give them a reason to come into your store and you're going to be able to do that. And I think that, that, that could change the game in the future. So uh, I would say that really the lines uh, between uh, online and offline commerce are blurring. You know, uh, I don't like the words e-commerce anymore or offline retail or online retail. This is about multi-channel commerce fundamentally, and I don't think you need an Amazon strategy. I think you think I think you need a multi-channel strategy that includes Amazon and and to understand how to how to leverage a platform that essentially gives you access to all of the available channels that are that are growing all the time. I mean, last year, who had a Pinterest strategy? And so th these things are changing all the time. You need to keep up with what's happening. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I would just add to that. I think for, for retailers out there looking to protect a lot of their margins and protecting a lot of their sales, I don't think, am, like, like to what Jeff was saying, you have to put in a lot of multi-channel multi strategy, not only eBay, not only Amazon, but you have to build brand and repeat users to your own site to actually maintain that sustainable business model because this thing is not going to be around for, you know, a, a long time. Yeah, my last comment would be about you know thinking as well about how you can uh, capitalize on users that you know have have access to information everywhere and all the time and may you know start um, checking out a product and taking a look at that while they're at their desktop but continuing it on their phones and actually maybe ending it on their tablet on the couch in the end um, and I think this is something that we'll also see more and more of in the future and something that should be on top of everybody's minds. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with us, and thanks so much to our panel. Thanks, you guys. I look forward to catching up with you one-on-one -on -one here in a few minutes.